Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Coming together as God's family, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right, and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God that is at Corinth, with all the holy ones throughout Achaia, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all encouragement, who encourages us in our every affliction so that we may be able to encourage those who are in any affliction with the encouragement with which we ourselves are encouraged by God. For as Christ's sufferings overflow to us, so through Christ does our encouragement also overflow. If we are afflicted, it is for your encouragement and salvation. If we are encouraged, it is for your encouragement, which enables you to endure the same sufferings that we suffer. Our hope for you is firm, for we know that as you share in the sufferings, you also share in the encouragement. The word of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Look to him, that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress, he saved them. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. 
The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Thus they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. As we listen to today's reading, the first reading from Paul today really helps us to understand a context for interpreting the Beatitudes as we have them in today's Gospel from Matthew. Because what we see is that um, any of us that is, has been living know that there are times when we experience suffering, when we experience challenges, when we experience uh, essentially things that we would rather not experience. And one of the things that St. Paul teaches us today is that we are truly participating in the sufferings of Christ. But it's something that may be a comfort for some, and for others it may continue to be a challenge. But today's reading, the first reading from Paul, even goes farther, because it helps us to understand that when we experience blessings, in fact, all of our experiences of blessings are given to us by the Lord. And certainly none of us would be afraid to receive a blessing. And when we feel downtrodden, when we feel challenged, when we are experiencing those sufferings that we would rather not experience, even though we might understand that we are participating in the suffering of Christ, our Lord also gives us encouragement. And so when we listen to today's gospel reading, the Beatitudes, we understand and we really don't know why, but we understand that there are people that suffer tremendously in the course of their life, that are poor, do not have enough food to eat, it's not even something that they would ever imagine of having a time in their life when they feel full. Or someone who grows up in a place where there's um, abuse or fear of war. There's all kinds of circumstances where literally millions of people are experiencing great suffering in this world today. And our Lord has come to, first of all, encourage them, but as we hear in today's gospel, to bless them. They are blessed. Because maybe we might have a challenge of understanding how we suffer. Maybe we might have a challenge in really recognizing that we are participating in the suffering of Christ when we are sick or when we have some tremendous disaster 
in our life or in our world. But what our Lord also teaches us is that he's always with us. He's always guiding us. He's always blessing us. And so today's readings are really meant to be an encouragement. If you're suffering, if you see no way out, if you only experience darkness, our Lord is with you. If you are feeling wonderful today, our Lord is with you. If you just think everything is perfect with the world today, it's raining lightly and the flowers and the grass are being watered. What a gift. Ultimately, our Lord is in control of this world. We might want to not recognize that every day, but it's true. And our Lord desires that each one of us experience his blessings. And it's not for us to necessarily understand why we might experience suffering or why we might experience tremendous encouragement. But our Lord is blessing us today and each and every moment of our life. And we know St. Therese understood this well when she said, everything is grace. Please stand. Let us bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father. Let us pray first of all for Francis, our Pope, for bishops, priests, deacons, and religious. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for our society as we begin to open up and experience uh, the norms that we once were quite accustomed. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all those who are first responders, for those who are troops serving throughout the world, and for medical personnel, for them we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for those who are poor, for those who do not have sufficient food, do not have access to clean drinking water, or an opportunity for education, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for supporters of the Society of Little Flower, and for their many intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let's today remember Adrian Pozankas, for whom he is celebrating his birthday today. We pray to the Lord. Lord and let us remember our beloved dead, those who have gone before us, that they may be one with Christ. We pray to the Lord. And let us remember our sick, for those who are suffering, for those who are without hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord and let us now offer our own prayers before our Father in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Father, we bring all our prayers before you. We ask you to hear them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours 
may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you. All the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a safe sign of peace. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ, give me a safe, life.
Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil and lead us to what is right, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us offer a prayer to Mary, our mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady Mount Carmel, as you leave today, please be generous with the donations, if you can be. Thank you so much. Go in peace. The Mass is ended.